Hey YouTube, Matt here, Maple Mountain Fireplace. Hey, today we're gonna be putting in this nectar wood stove. We're gonna show you step by step with the pipe, the installation, how the whole stove goes together, and hopefully you can DIY. All right, here we are. We're prepping the stove to bring it in. We've taken off the doors and kind of lightened it up a little bit. We're protecting it with a nice drop cloth so we can roll it in. And now here we have it set in place, making sure we have the clearances we need. So now we're setting up the laser to give us a nice center mark. And we've already checked it with the stud finder. We're right between the trusses. So now we can lay it out and mark for cutting the hole with a support box. So because this is a vaulted ceiling, we've got to figure out the difference of the length of the hole we need to cut. It's about a three quarters of an inch more. And I think the pitch on this is like a 212. So 12 by 12 box. Now we're just squaring it to get a mark. So here we have a long drill bit so we can go all the way through the ceiling and then up through the roof. So we wanna make sure it's nice and square off the wall. So we've got a large carpenter square and then we're just using a pencil to mark out the measurements for the ceiling support box. And again, on the upside, we've added about three quarters of an inch, but that could change depending on the pitch of your vaulted ceiling. So we got a multi-tool that cuts a nice clean hole. It's pretty easy in drywall and because it's vibrating, it's not gonna cut your wires if you end up hitting a wire. But the secret to not hitting a wire is just barely penetrate the drywall as you cut. All right, so we're taking out some of the insulation and we can always put that back in when we're closing it up. All right, so we've already pre-drilled the center mark. So we're just making sure that flashing lines up and we're gonna mark it and cut it about a quarter inch bigger than the mark. So we mark the inside, we want it to be a little bit bigger so the flashing will fit under there nice and easy. So we're getting our two by four trimmers in here, giving us the space to attach all four corners of the block adding a little shim here to make sure everything fits nice and everything's square and level. Again, you wanna make sure all four corners are attached firmly. So the support box, this supports the weight of the chimney pipe, which with this chimney, we're only doing eight feet, but still you're over a hundred pounds of, of weight. So it's very important to get this support box supported really well. You want to make sure all the studs are holding it firmly in place. And now we're just leveling it and attaching the box to our trim pieces. So even if you make a little mistake in cutting the drywall, the trim will hide any mistakes. So back to the roof flashing, we're just prying up the shingles around it and removing any nails that would get in our way of, of sliding this flashing right underneath the roof. So typically we go about halfway. Here we're probably two thirds of the way. So this is a good flashing. So we add a little silicone underneath just to make sure it's not really required and slide it back under. Make sure it's nice and flat on the bottom and we just attach little drywall screws and then we can silicone those. So the first section of pipe here, we're attaching the bracket that actually supports the pipe. And you can see the black fitting there. That is your stove pipe adapter. So this chimney, we used an 18 to start, a four foot piece, and then a two foot section on the top. They come with locking bands, really easy to install. Make sure the chimney is level, and then we add another screw to the top of the flashing. 
chimney cap, really easy, just twist lock it, nice and tight, no screws required for that. And the storm collar, so as you can see, the top of the flashing was vented, so that allows for the pipe to cool off a little bit. And now we're just putting that storm collar and also an extra layer of silicone to prevent any leaks running down the pipe. So here it is, our chimney's out of the roof about five feet, so no requirement for roof brace, but if you wanna do a roof brace, by all means, do it. So before we set the stove, we have an insulated board that's gonna give us about two inches of height, but it has a product called Skamol, which is, has a very high R value to make the bottom of the stove not transfer the heat to the floor. And there is tile floor with a subfloor, so it doesn't quite have the R value required to make this stove safe. So here we have our first section of pipe. This is our stove pipe adapter. It's flared on the bottom so it fits over the collar. And now we've got our telescopic pipe that we're going to connect. You have the one guy needs to hold the bottom and then you can push the top of it up, get it level and put your screws in. So here's a collar designed to hide the connection of the double wall to the stovepipe adapter. And now we're just setting up the stove. We're putting the doors on, the oven door for the bottom, and the adjustable grills for the oven. This is a side refractory that's actually a steel plate, half inch thick for each side. And the baffle, it just allows the stove to heat up more evenly and efficiently. Thanks for watching our video. As you can see, this is a nice stove. It's very unique with the oven. You've got a good cooktop. If you'd like a price, give us a call, email, check out our website. Please like the video, subscribe to our YouTube, and thank you so much for watching.